Happy Mother's Day. You might not be a mom, but every one of us entered this world through the patient endurance of a mom. Some moms, uh, they go through sickness, either at the beginning or even um, most of the way through their pregnancy, and they have to endure some pretty gross stuff. And, And there's other moms that have serious health issues that they deal with throughout their pregnancy. And And they have to take extra measures to keep themselves and their babies healthy and maybe even alive. Of course, a lot of moms deal with gaining weight and changing hormones and swollen feet and lack of sleep throughout their pregnancy. And that last few weeks leading up into childbirth is just kind of miserable. And of course, childbirth itself is super painful, right? And yet your mom patiently endured all of that And here you are in all your splendor. You know, I'd like for you to take that idea of patient endurance that was required uh, to give birth to you and and just take that idea with you into what we're going to talk about today as we wrap up our series that we are calling Paused. We hate to wait. You know, whether it's waiting for a movie to be released that you've been waiting for and excited about for quite some time, or uh, maybe it is waiting for the doctor's office to call you back uh, with the results of the test, or maybe it's, it's waiting until after dinner to eat that yummy dessert that's been sitting on the counter all afternoon just tempting you and taunting you. Whatever it is, we hate to wait. And right now, it just feels like life has been put on pause, and we don't know when the play button is going to get hit again. And that can be really difficult. That can be really hard to wait. But you know, there's some really valuable things that you and I can be learning through waiting. We've already talked about a number of them. If you missed any of the stuff that we've talked about in this series, you can always go back to our website and and look at these different sermons that we've done. But but we talked about how waiting gives us the opportunity to learn how to be still. We talked about how waiting gives us the opportunity just to learn how to listen. And last week, we talked about how waiting gives us the opportunity to, to really learn how to remain hopeful when life's hard. And today we want to wrap up this series with this thought. We want to learn through waiting uh, how we can be patient and endure. Because waiting does give us that opportunity to learn how to be patient and endure. You know, last week in Romans 8.25, Paul challenged us to wait patiently for our future hope. In Romans 12, 12, Paul challenges the believer to patiently endure affliction or suffering. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul prays for the believers in that city that they would have great endurance and patience. I think the Apostle Paul would have really liked my mom because she was constantly telling me that patience is a virtue. I get a little squirrely or a little impatient, and she just would always be reminding me that patience is a virtue, that patience is a standard of moral excellence. I don't know where you're at right now or where you're watching this, but if you're able to, without being weird, if you're able to, would you raise your hand if you have been growing impatient with all of this COVID-19? Like the whole thing, you're just, you're over it, you're impatient with all of it. Now listen, I didn't say point to the person in the room that lost his or her patience this week or maybe this morning, so don't do that. We've all had impatient moments in life, even though that we know patient people are a lot more fun to be around than impatient people, right? Even though we know that the Bible instructs us that Jesus expects us to be patient, and we know that because we have the Holy Spirit as a follower of Jesus, 
that the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. And when we rely on the Spirit, things like patience are growing in us as a, as a character quality. But knowing that we, that we should be patient and knowing how to be patient, those aren't the same thing. What I'd like to do this morning together is explore what the Bible says about how we become a patient person. How do we become a person who has patient endurance? And I'm not talking just about things like childbirth, just all kinds of life situations that we need patient endurance. How do we develop that quality? How do we become that kind of person? Well, I'd like for you to join me in the book of James. If you would grab your Bible, open your Bible up to James chapter 1 and join me there. And follow along. If you don't have a Bible, don't panic. These verses will be there for you on the screen. James chapter 1, verse 2 says this. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested... Your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I don't know what version of the Bible that you might be following along with this morning, but every one of those versions addresses the believer, that's what this, these verses are written to, or who they're written to. Every one of these versions uses the word joy. Every version uses the word trial, or the phrase testing of your faith. Every version describes spiritual maturity with words like complete and perfect, lacking nothing. But I love how these different versions translate the original word hupomene. Hupomene is the Greek word that has been translated into a number of different English words, depending on the, the translation that you are looking at right now. If you have a, a New Living or a New American Standard, uh, you have the word endurance. If you have an NIV, you have the word perseverance. If you have a King James or a New King James, you have the word patience. If you have an English Standard Version, you have the word steadfastness. Now just think about those words. Listen carefully to those words all together. Endurance, perseverance, patience, steadfastness. That's abomine, and it's something that grows in the soil of adversity and pain in our lives. No one learns to endure something that is pleasant and fun, right? We enjoy things that are pleasant and fun. We don't endure that. No one learns to be patient through a lack of frustration. If I said to you, my children are perfect, my wife is always a delight. My job has no stress whatsoever, and I always, uh, I always feel like I'm making a difference in the world. My, my vehicle has never had a single problem with it. Technology has never left me down. Life is really, really good. If I said that to you, you would not say back to me, oh my, Pastor Mark, you must be a really patient person. That's not the conclusion that you would come to. You might conclude that I'm a liar after saying all of those things, but you would not come to the conclusion that I was a very patient person until you saw how I dealt with frustration, right? See, James is talking to followers of Jesus about various trials and troubles that we face in life, and he is challenging us to look at our troubles as an opportunity to experience joy. 
Joy is having a positive attitude or a pleasant emotion, and that's produced when you get what you desire. That's joy. You might say, well, hold up, time out, whoa. Well, how are trials and joy connected? How would trials create an opportunity for us to experience joy? Do trials themselves produce joy, a positive attitude? Do trials themselves produce in us a pleasant emotion? Or or are trials and troubles something that we desire? No, of course not. It's what those trials and troubles can produce in us that cause us to experience joy, a positive attitude. Pleasant emotion, trials, troubles, difficulties, pain, suffering. These things create an opportunity for us to develop huvamone, perseverance, endurance, steadfastness, patience. These are qualities that we can desire. These are qualities that if we saw them growing in us, that could, that could give us this, this feeling of joy, this emotion of joy, this, this experience of having joy, a, a positive attitude, a pleasant emotion, knowing that we are developing these really great qualities in our lives. That's why James says that we can experience joy when we are experiencing something that is producing a virtuous quality in us, even if we don't desire the experience itself that is actually producing those qualities. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like a mother who experiences joy in all of the unpleasant, uncomfortable, painful moments of her pregnancy. Why? Because she knows that all of those are temporary trials that will result in something that she really desires, a baby, right? Here's a picture of my mom and me when I was a baby. My mom was beautiful, but I mean, come on. That's a cute baby, right? That's a cute baby. Most adorable baby award three years running kind of baby, right? And, and you look at that picture, you're like, oh, that is totally worth it to go through the pain that is worse than a compound fracture and, and you end up with a cute baby? Yeah, totally, totally worth it, right? Listen, my mom didn't sign up for morning sickness and painful contractions because she thought it would be a fun way to spend a Saturday. She signed up to have a baby. She signed up to have a child, and so her desire to be a mother gave her joy and patient endurance through the difficult moments that it took to get to what she desired. Let me ask you an honest question. Do you desire to be a person of joy, or do you desire to be a miserable person? Do you desire to be a a pleasant person who who has a positive attitude, even when the circumstances that you find yourself in are not necessarily pleasant? Or do you just desire to have a rotten attitude? Do you desire to be spiritually mature? Or do you desire to be spiritually immature for the rest of your life? Do you desire to have patience? and the ability to endure and remain steadfast when life gets hard? Or do you desire to be an impatient person who when life gets hard, you're a quitter. You just give up when life gets hard. Is that your desire to be that kind of person? See, if you truly desire to be a patient person of joy who can endure all kinds of hard situations, James gives you and I some spiritual insight into how to become that kind of person. 
But what I find really helpful from these verses is this simple thought. Where you put your focus determines your ability to be patient and endure. Where you put your focus determines your ability to be patient and endure. When I read what James writes in these verses, it challenged me, challenges me uh, to really think about where I put my focus during difficult days. We all face difficult days. And we all have a choice of what we're going to focus on when we go through them. If your desire is to be a patient person of joy who can endure all kinds of, of hard situations, then you and I have to choose very carefully where we are going to put our focus. I want to give you several focal points to fix your eyes on, right? Several focal points for you to fix your eyes on. Here's the first one. Focus on what you are gaining, not on what you are losing. Focus on what you are gaining, not on what you are losing. According to these verses, trials are an opportunity for us to gain things like great joy, to, to, be, to, to gain uh, patience, to gain spiritual maturity, to, to gain the ability to endure. I saw a picture on social media of a vehicle that someone had written on the glass, you lied, my child is not a joy to have in class. I, I think we probably have all had moments where we have lost our patience. And that often happens because we are frustrated by something that we lost. Maybe we lost our freedom or we lost our normal schedule or we have lost some sense of control. Maybe it's because we have lost that special moment that we were looking forward to or maybe we lost a loved one or we lost our health. Losing something is, is never pleasant. Is not something that we sign up for, but, but if we stay focused on what we are losing, we will never see the things that we might be gaining. You know, is it possible that during this time when, when life's been hit on pause and it just seems like we're losing this and we're losing that, is it possible that, that you might be gaining some really valuable things? Maybe, maybe you are gaining some really quality time with your family that you would not have had otherwise. Maybe you are gaining some deep, meaningful conversations with your spouse, with your kids, with maybe family and friends, maybe with people about your faith. Maybe you are gaining the opportunity to reset some priorities in your lives that have been kind of askew for quite a while. Maybe you are gaining a, a deeper faith or, or a greater sense of dependence on God through all of this. You know, those are all really great things that, that we could be gaining while life is on pause, even in the midst of, of losing things around us. Focus on what you're gaining, not on what you're losing, because where you put your focus determines your ability to be patient and endure. Here's, here's the second one. Focus on what you are learning, not on what you are experiencing. Focus on what you're learning, not on what you are experiencing. Now, I read through what James writes here, and it's very clear that trials are an opportunity for us to learn how to trust God for strength and endurance rather than trusting in our own strength for endurance. But that's really hard to see if we keep our focus on the experience, the unpleasant, the difficult experience that we are going through. It's hard to see what we might be learning if that's all we focus on is the difficulty of the experience itself. You know, all of this technology that right now hopefully you are enjoying, hopefully you are benefiting from as, as we 
communicate in this way through technology. All this stuff, uh, I didn't know how to do any of this stuff two months ago. And I would be lying to you if I said that I uh, have not had any moments where uh, my patience has been uh, stretched thin. There have been times uh, throughout this experience that there's, you know, the, the pace of things and the change to my schedule and, and the way the methods in which I have been used to doing things in ministry and that all gets kind of ripped away and changed without my permission, right? I'd be lying if I uh, said to you that it hasn't been at times frustrating. But we are now reaching people every week that, that we would have never been able to connect to before we learned how to do live stream services. So welcome. Thank you for joining us in this way. We, we are glad that you're here. and We want to connect with you. and We're glad that we learned how to do this. I know that I have built deeper relationships with some of the families in our church because we've been learning how to use Zoom to do meetings, to do online grace groups, and, and it's given us an opportunity to have those groups a little bit smaller, a little more uh, intimate, and, and it's been really, really good. I think we've been able to bless some nurses and some folks in nursing homes who oftentimes are forgotten. You know, these are people that matter. These are, these are jobs that are really, really important in our community. And we've had the opportunity uh, to find some new creative ways to bless them and encourage them and just reach out in our community in a, in a new way. I've seen our giving go up, not down. And that's Probably not what most of us would have expected, but that's what's been happening. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's mainly due to the faithfulness of our people, uh, to uh, the desire of our church family to be obedient to God. And uh, that's, that's been an incredible thing. But it's also because a lot of people are learning how to use online giving, which is something new. I know that the skills that our staff has been learning over the last couple months is what is going to make it possible for us to reopen at a much faster pace than we would have been able to uh, prior to knowing how to do certain things with technology. And so it's important that we focus on what we are learning, not just what we are experiencing, not just the difficulty uh, of what we're going through. What you put your focus on determines your ability to be patient and endure. Here's the third thing I want you to think about, and it's this. Focus on what you are becoming, not what you're lacking. Focus on what you are becoming, not what you are lacking. When I read what James writes here, I see that trials are an opportunity for us to become a more patient person. Trials are an opportunity for us to become someone who can remain steadfast, someone who can endure in the face of trouble and trials. Trials are an opportunity for us to become a more spiritually mature person, someone who's complete, and perfect, Needing nothing. Those are words that are describing spiritual maturity. See, here's what I think we have the tendency to do when we, when we go through difficulty and we see our failures and we see our shortcomings. I think we have a tendency to just stay focused on those. Here's where I failed. Here's where I came up short. As if that was the end of our story. Have there been moments when you've blown it? Have there been moments when you have lost your patience? Have there been moments when you just felt the inadequacy of, uh, of the demand of the challenge that stands in front of you and you see the things that you are lacking? If I'm being honest with you, uh, I would say yes, 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 all of that. I'm not proud of this, but I... 
I lost my patience with a woman at Walmart because uh, she told me that I was standing too close to her. She couldn't possibly walk past me because I was standing too close, and my response in the moment was, is this, is this far enough? I'm not proud of that. I think it demonstrates uh, a lack of character in that moment. I have felt the tension of my, my own inadequacies to, to do things that, that others have done so much better than me. You know, it, it wouldn't be hard. It wouldn't take you long to scroll through uh, other services that are happening right now and find one. It wouldn't take you long at all to find one that they do everything better than what we do. Now, I, I don't know if, if this is going to shock you or not, but uh, they didn't offer movie-making classes or how to put together an online service. That wasn't one of the classes they offered to us when I was graduating from seminary. It just wasn't. It's easy, I think, to get to get focused on our failures and our shortcomings and all the things that we are not, all the things that we are lacking in. And we get focused on it as if it is the end of our story. And when we do that, it leads to frustration. It leads to a lack of patience. It leads to a lack of endurance. And we wind up giving up and quitting. Instead, we need to focus on what we are becoming because our, our, our failures and our shortcomings, they don't have to be the end of our story. Yeah, I, I blew it at Walmart. But I'm not satisfied to be that kind of person. I am becoming a more patient person. I am becoming a more grace-filled person in times of tension and stress, because God's not done with me, because God is at work in my heart. It's not the end of my story. Yeah, I could compare myself to a lot of other pastors. And I could see a lot of places where I am lacking, but if I continue to grow and learn and adapt and depend on God, then I am becoming the man and the leader that God intends for me to be. So we focus on what we are becoming, not on what we are lacking, because where you put your focus determines your ability to be patient and endure. There's one more focal point I want you to fix your eyes on with me this morning. We're going to go back to Hebrews chapter 12. If you would... Turn back just, just a few pages back from where we are in James. And, and it's, it's this, this focal point I want you to fix your eyes on in, in Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to start the last part of verse 1. It says, let's run with endurance the race God has set before us. Now, the race is an image of our lives. And... And the writer of Hebrews is challenging us to run that race, to live our lives with endurance. Well, how do we do that? Well, he answers the how in verse 2. We do this by keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Just take a moment and reflect on the hostility, the pain, the suffering, the agony that Jesus endured. It says this in verse 3, when you think about that, all that Jesus endured, here's the result. Then you won't become weary and give up. 
When you think about the patient endurance of Jesus, when you think about the cross, whenever you're going through difficulty, whenever you're, you're, you're feeling like, I, I don't have the patience for this, I'm going to give up. The writer of Hebrews says, no, 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 no. You need to stop and think about Jesus on the cross. You need to keep going. You know, Jesus is the one who sets the standard for patient endurance. And so we need, to, we need to focus on who sets that standard for us. Jesus had the power to stop the treason. Jesus had the power to stop the false trial. Jesus had the power to stop the mocking and the beating and the spitting and the whipping. He had the power to stop the hammering of the nails in his hands and his feet. He had the power to stop the cross. At any moment, he could have said, it is enough. But instead, he patiently endured until the moment he said, it is finished. And so when we feel like giving up, when we feel like we've lost our patience, this is no, no. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Look how he patiently endured the suffering of the cross for you. And keep going. Don't quit. Jesus is the one who sets the standard of patient endurance. And so we fix our eyes on him. We keep focused on him as our example, as our standard. If you have not yet trusted Jesus Christ as your forgiver of sin, as your Savior from hell, if you've not yet made Him the leader of your life, I want to encourage you not to wait one more moment. I know this whole series has been about learning how to wait, but this is not something that you should wait to do. We don't know what's going to happen in, uh, in, a, in the six months, in a year. We don't know what's going to happen this week or today. Life is uncertain. We keep hearing these commercials that say, uh, we're living in uncertain times. Haven't we always been? Isn't that always true? That we're always, every day, every moment, living in an uncertain time? We don't know what the next moment will bring. This has just brought a big spotlight on that reality. And if you're ready to take that step of faith and trust Jesus as your forgiver, to, to look at the cross and understand that He did that for you so that you can be made right with God. I want to challenge you, go to our website, hit that live stream button on the, on the website, and at the bottom of that, there's a, there's a button that says, I'm ready, some really great information about some next steps that you can take towards faith in Christ as your forgiver as your savior as the leader of your life so that you can begin to learn what it really means to follow Jesus and live a Jesus centered life if you have made that decision to trust Jesus as your forgiver as your savior if if you have made the decision to follow him i want to encourage you to never ever forget to always remember who sets our standard for patient endurance, to keep your eyes fixed on our Savior. Remember who it is that we are striving to be like as we follow Jesus. We want to be like Him. Remember who it is that gave us His Holy Spirit to grow in us qualities like love and joy and peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And no, I didn't forget it. Patience and all of these qualities in increasing measure as we depend on the Holy Spirit to develop those qualities in us. While life is on pause right now, as we wait for that play button to get pressed again, could, could we be learning how to be patient? Could we be learning how to endure? Could we be learning how to refocus our vision on Jesus as our standard for patient endurance, as the one who wants to teach us some really valuable things through the difficulties 
and the pain and the suffering that we experience in this life, knowing that we have a future hope because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. See, where you put your focus determines your ability to be patient and endure.